Hey, everybody, this is Don McDaniel, WrestleZone.com, and I have Mick Foley here for a very special interview, something that's near and dear to my heart, suffering from, I've had anxiety, I've went through depression, and I had, I'm diagnosed with OCD, so we're doing the, the Tag Me In campaign, and Mick Foley's uh, been very proactive starting off. Uh, Mick, thank you for joining me today for this great cause. Yeah, yeah, you're, very, you're really welcome. I was uh, honored when Christy Hemme uh, reached out to me and told me what they wanted to do and just really impressed by how hard she worked to lasso in some of the biggest names in the business to talk about a really important situation. Now, yeah, um, how did this, because you've been so proactive in a lot of different causes like rain and other things too that, that has been near and dear to your heart. Um, how did this really attract you uh, from a perspective of uh, just coming in and knowing what it's, how anxiety and depression has affected not only a lot of people in wrestling, but just fans and, and non-fans. Yeah. Well, you know, mental health is always an issue for all of us. And I think it's just been life's tough, you know, and uh, a lot of times when people come home from work, their family situations are not ideal. And I knew uh, going into this pandemic that, uh, uh, that uh, ca cases of uh, domestic violence were going to increase uh, loneliness was going to uh, become an even bigger issue. So I, I, maybe six months in, I just pulled over to the side of the road uh, and I just texted something about how, um, you know, this uh, coronavirus, coronavirus has revealed uh, loneliness to be its own pandemic. And it got like 10,000 likes within a couple hours. So obviously we were touching on something uh, that affected people. And as I mentioned, uh, you know, in wrestling, uh, all of us know somebody who has made a really bad decision, you know, bad decision and uh, uh, unfortunately a final decision that the life they're currently leading is uh, that no life at all is better than that life they're currently leading. So uh, we want people to know that we as a huge dysfunctional wrestling family are, uh, are out there to support our uh you know our colleagues absolutely absolutely and uh, has there ever been like a moment uh that you've ever gone i mean obviously everybody has anxiety but uh is there a moment where you've ever had like a bout of anxiety like a kind of longer term or depression or anything like that or well you know what um uh i've written a little bit about my experience with uh, head injuries uh-huh now the head injuries can mess with your mind make you feel like nothing you've done has been important even if there are fans who could <laughs> give you, uh, you know, who'd be more than willing to debate you on that and tell you how many times you did something that was worthwhile. And so the, uh, the head injuries, they can really play with your mind, make you incredibly sensitive to uh, uh, negative feedback, uh, just make you feel like nothing you've done has been uh, uh, worth much of anything. And a lot of us struggle with that. You know, we go from being, uh, and I'm lucky, you know, I'm lucky that I can kind of jump in and out of the wrestling world so that if I were to call WWE and say, hey, I hear you have a house show coming up, uh, you know, in um, Richmond, Virginia, I'm going to be in town. Can I come out and be the guest, you know, ring it out? They, they let me do whatever I wanted to do. Most guys and women don't have that benefit. You know, for a lot of them, it could, they go from being uh, next to Spider-Man on the toy shelf to uh, you know to try to figure out where you know how they're going to make their rent payment. So it's a really difficult business, and uh, we have to look out for each other and let each other know that we're there for them. Absolutely, it's a, yeah, and it's like wrestling is you know you already have like a communal uh, relation obviously that a lot of people can't relate to so having that like knowing that connection but being nobody that you can have other people to confide in whatever like that is so helpful um i wanted to ask too like if there was ever a situation where you had about a depression or you had anxiety just hypothetical speaking uh is who from your time in, in the wrestling ring would be somebody that you would feel confident like to confide in if you had had to ever get that opportunity. You want me to tell you who people confide in? No, not necessarily, not necessarily. But who's always, who would have been a good like uh, sounding board in a lot of ways? Well, I did have sounding boards. I was really lucky, but for me, the best sounding board of them all was my wife. Yeah. So, uh, you know, one of the things I talk about on this you know, current tour I'm doing that makes up for all the 
dates that had to be postponed uh, in, uh, because of COVID is how big a, f- a factor my wife was on my career. Mm-hmm. So I can always say anything to her. And I had a lot of different, uh, Robert Fuller was a good mentor. Jim Cornette was a good mentor. Terry Funk was a good mentor. So I've been lucky over the years, Paul Heyman and ECW. I've been lucky. These are more business mentors, but uh, yeah, uh, I don't know if there was the idea that you could reach out to a friend. Um, you know, even up until 10 years ago, admitting you had a concussion was seen as a sign of weakness. So sure. we've come a long way in a short time, but we have a long way to go. And I think uh, beginning with um, Ashley Massaro's passing a couple of years ago, the women who work with her really wanted to do something specifically for the women in the business. But now I think we see that this is uh, something that affects men and women. That's why I'm so glad that Christy recruited Jericho and, uh, you know, Mark Henry, uh, big cast. There's a handful, you know, five or six uh, men uh, who made probably more than that, who made a big difference in the business. They're not shy about talking about the, you know, difficulty they've had along the way. And the aspect of it that I think so neat about Tag Me In too is a lot of some of these uh, talents too have dealt, dealt with depression or anxiety, but other talents like like you or Jericho maybe not have had had certain aspects of that too. So it's like everybody's in this kind of together in a lot of ways too. And I think that's a fascinating aspect about the Tag Me In campaign too. That I, I was like looking at all the names, I was like, wow, I've I've noticed they've had issues or problems or anything like that, but others you know, are just like big proponents and proactive about it as like advocates or uh, allies in a lot of ways. Is that Henry Winkler and the one and only over your head? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So fun fact, Mick, I uh, interviewed him about that movie. I like reached out and I sent, and uh, he was such like so many of you guys, wrestlers and everything are, are some of the nicest people that I've gotten to interview, but like he legit was like probably the nicest person. I've ever Henry, met. yeah, Henry. I told him uh, he had uh, forced a lot of us to raise our game mm-hmm. when it came to uh, personal appearances. And uh, Mitch Pelegi played assistant director Skinner on uh, on the X Files. Not yeah, he goes yeah, definitely because you see him interacting with people and doing magic tricks for people who are not even on his line. Yeah, he's a great guy. He's and he crazy. was the coolest guy in the world in the mid '70s. So Wasn't like, he? Oh, yeah, if the as, Fonz as a loving year old, I was a mark for the Fonz. Yeah. yeah, and then my kids used to watch him on Nick at Night. So mm-hmm. uh, not not so much you, Mickey, but uh, Dewey Noel. Yeah. Oh and, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's great. And that movie's so good too. It's like, there's so much, like it's, I watch it and I'm like, oh my God, there's so much relevancy to wrestling today too. And watch. Yeah, yeah. I'll have to go back and watch it. But it was interesting that when he was on top of the world and could have picked any movie project, that was his first uh, project uh, yeah. as, you know, as really the man was mm-hmm. to do, yeah. A Carl so Rutter classic. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Uh, so I wanted to ask too, regards to tag like literal tag match um everybody knows you tag with the rock yeah i loved your run with stone cold and obviously terry as chainsaw charlie those are like the three primary ones wwe wise um if you could go one more run with any of those talents you had to pick one who would it be <laughs> to be my tag partner to be your tag partner oh, i don't know um Geez, I think uh, Kane and I were underrated as a team. Yeah, that's true too. That was a good team. And then to put the best friends together, uh, me and Al Snow, Mankind and Al Snow. Yeah, that would that would be fun for sure. Hey, can I mention something else about the uh, tag me in? Um, yes, absolutely. Go ahead. Uh, this, uh, on the la- when I was doing my tour in September, mm-hmm. I was able to raise $15,000 for uh, NAMI, which is uh, National Alliance of Medical Illness. Uh, well, they raised 14,500 for them and 500 for a local, uh, walk, uh, you know, uh, you know, light against the darkness. I think it is from the, yeah, did that in Missouri. Uh, so December 5th, I just put it out today, the show I'm doing in Atlanta, because that's Daphne. It was Daphne's adopted hometown. Uh, 100% of ticket sales will go to NAMI, Georgia. Wow. And so we're hoping to raise another six or seven thousand dollars. So if anyone's from that Atlanta area or within a hundred or two hundred miles and wants to see my show and help out a good cause, uh, you can go to realmickfoley.com and pick up tickets. 
That's fantastic. Oh, that's so good. Like, and Daphne too is another name that like, you know, it's so tragic. And like you hear, I, I've never met her personally, but I, she was at the Pittsburgh show. Me and you were, you were at the one time I remember. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. She was there as my guest. Yeah. Yeah. And um, she like, just hearing all the positive stuff about her and how like uh, she was as a person, but not only that, like you go back and watch her and, and what she was capable of doing. She was ahead of her time from a women's wrestling perspective. Oh, sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And even daring to go out there with a, you know, to go out boldly with a gimmick that was so different than what anyone else was doing. And uh, it's great that you see uh, a few of the women today pointing to Daphne and saying, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't have gotten involved. Right. So right. she had a, yeah, she was a big influence and she was a good friend and uh, you know, someone I, I wished uh, that I kept in better touch the last couple of years she was here, but um you know, this campaign that the uh, Christy and her friends and colleagues have come up with is really a great way to, to let people who are struggling know that there's somebody out there. If you had, if there was some, like, if people wanted to get proactive a lot with tag me in and stuff like that, how would you kind of encourage that to do it? Uh, via, would it be just social media stuff? I know they have t-shirts available and everything yeah. like that as well. Yeah, yeah. There's a t-shirt on Pro Wrestling Tees where all the profits, uh, proceeds, profits, whatever the case may be, uh, goes to uh, a great organization. I'm not sure which one. Um, and, uh, and, and also, if anyone wants to volunteer on a local level, there's always a need for volunteers. There's no shortage of ways to make a difference. Uh, but uh, our lives are really busy. And if someone wants to make a difference on social media, they can put out a little video and uh, hashtag tag me in, hashtag tag me in United and just uh, help get the word out. It's such a cool campaign. I'm like super excited when I saw it because that's how I got was first notified was via pro wrestling tees and the t-shirt. I was yeah. like, this is awesome. And then seeing your quotes on there and then the list of names, it's really refreshing to see and uh, such a cause that's so needed nowadays, especially during the pandemic time, like you mentioned as well. So it's no doubt, no doubt about it. I got to ask you this too. So we saw you with Thunder Rosa and she's yeah. one of my like favorites women wrestlers going today. Uh, that was the first time meeting her for you, I think. Right. So yeah. how did, how did that go? How do you feel about Thunder Rosa overall as a talent too? Well, you know, I've been following Thunder Rosa a little bit and then uh, you know, she exploded on the scene with that great uh, hardcore match with uh, Dr. Baker mm-hmm. and uh, you know, <laughs> I met Britt a couple of months ago in Britsburg and she signed a photo to me to Mick Foley from the real hardcore legend. Oh my gosh. <laughs> We're having a little fun with that. You know, I said that it was so great to meet the real hardcore legend and I had a photo of me and uh, Ro- Thunder Rosa. Uh, so uh, uh, Britt brought, brought up the fact that it was people talking about her and how that photo of her has really gone on to be, I'd say iconic in a short time. Oh, yeah. And so I said, hey, I think uh, the world would love to see a rematch settle this thing for all. So I would, that would be a great, uh, great payoff because it was Thunder who got the win. It was uh, Britt who got, you know, who walked away with that great image. Uh, one of the, you know, just a great image. Um, so, it, yeah, it's fun. It's fun to get involved as long as... Uh, nobody's getting hurt. So I, I see that as a win-win situation. It's definitely a win-win, Mick. Definitely. One last thing I'll go is all your right. favorite writers all the time, like you, from an inspirational perspective, but also just class, like something, somebody that you like, I'm a big book guy. So that's kind of why I'm yeah. So uh, My favorite writers. Oh, well, John Irving was one of my favorites, mm-hmm. you know, loved his uh, way of telling stories about unique people. I think Stephen King is underrated as a great writer, even out. Yeah. My son's looking at, you don't think Stephen King is a great writer? No, I mean, no, I wouldn't say that, but I don't think he's underrated. I think he's underrated by critically. So <laughs> especially some of his stuff that is not horror specific, like uh, there was a, a collection of short novellas uh, yeah. The Body, which turned out to be Stand By Me, App Pupil, which was a movie, uh, Rita uh, Hayworth and the Shaw- Shawshank Redemption, which became the Shawshank Redemption. So one book of four novellas turned out two amazing movies and one pretty good movie. So I'd say he's a guy who's underrated. And I used to like, uh, 
I don't read as much as I used to. I really don't read nearly as much as I used to. Um, but uh, there were some uh, crime. Uh, Jonathan Kellerman was a crime novelist, and uh, he wrote about characters with, uh, you know, uh, psychoses. And, uh, and so sometimes you could find yourself in a strange way empathizing with the uh, bad guy or woman, even if you weren't sympathizing with them, if that makes right. any sense. They made that gray area for you. Yeah, yeah. To touch too, yeah. And, and we do really well in that gray area in pro wrestling. So Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Well, sweet, Mick, I can't thank you enough for taking the time for to promote Tag Me In. Such a great campaign. We'll be sure to include everything, all the information in uh, our WrestleZone article that we'll do, as well as this podcast as well. So thanks for taking the time. Thanks. I appreciate that. And uh, hey, check uh, realmickfoley.com and see when I might be coming to your park. Yeah. Uh, Absolutely. Have a nice day. Hey, thanks, Mick. You too. <laughs>